Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, episode 282. This is The Secret Show. I'm Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent is here. Hello, Mark. I can't hear Hello, you. Hello, <laughs> Patricia. How are you? <laughs> You're wearing white gloves. Are you going to do the white glove test to make sure there's no dirt on YouTube? Because those gloves will be dirty in about one second. Yeah. Yeah, no, this, these gloves are for a completely different and much more interesting reason. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we'll get so to we'll, that. But we'll get to it. Mm -hmm. um, well, for Mark and I and for you, it's time we put the heliocentric model in the trash. And on that note, on this show, just for fun, I am wearing an outfit made entirely from trash bags or bin liners, depending on what you call them where you live. Oh, Why? <laughs> I am breathless with anticipation. Yes, well, as I'm hope sure. it holds. It came up in chat in a previous show when I said that uh, I said that my mother had said one time that oh you could wear a trash bag and you could pull that off. And then someone in chat said it too. And although I think that's quite complimentary, I decided to put it to the test. So I've challenged myself and I've been putting together an outfit with uh, these black trash bags that I purchased to see if it will actually work. Now, would I wear this out in the street? No, but with trash bags, three of them actually, clear tape and scissors and nothing else, but a pair of heels, a belt, a pearl necklace and earrings. Here's what I whipped up. Oh, Everyone wanna see this? Sweet mother of God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It also helps when you're wearing about $8,000 worth of pearls. Well. They're not real pearls because I'm vegan. They're not? Of course oh, not, because oh, that would damn. require hurting an animal. But they're very nice fakes. All right, here's the outfit. I hope you can see it. It's sticking to my thighs. Hold on. <laughs> wow. All right, get it back up. Well, you're out okay, of frame. Okay. I had to get out of frame to pull it. All right. The top is made from one trash bag. I made it into like a style so it gives me a kind of defined waist. And then the skirt is two trash bags. It's below knee length because even if I'm wearing a trash bag, I'm gonna keep it classy. And uh, I'm wearing heels. So here's my <laughs> trash bag outfit. Very good. And if I had to answer the door wearing this, I mean, it might look a little odd, but it kind of looks like a pleather or you know faux leather dress. Yeah. And so that is the trash bag dress. Yeah. If anybody in chat uh, thinks I succeeded, what let's put a one in there there's not a lot of people one that could make that dress and two pull it off that's that's awesome thank you and i know it has nothing to do with flat earth although in flat earth we have to have a creative way of looking at the world the world we've been presented and nobody would be in flat earth unless they were able to think outside the box and this dress is an example of my style of thinking out of the box nice well done Hi. I have Honestly, a drink it's better, it's that I, than I thought it was going to turn out. Really, really. Well, it's better than I thought it was going to turn out, too. Um, I had a couple trial runs that didn't come out so well. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought, thought you were going to kind of turn it into one of those old, uh, you were going to wear like a potato sack version of it. where You, you know what? Don't give me another challenge, the potato sack challenge. No. Uh, Although, like, I don't think you can find actual potato sacks. Exactly. In That's old school. There's, right. Nobody's got freaking potato sacks anymore. But it would be great, though, for a flat earth and other hot potatoes. So what are you drinking? Yes, I made this, uh, whipped this up in the kitchen a little while ago. Uh, we have a fresh organic strawberry, organic cranberry juice, and we have our vegan vodka. So nice. Cheers. Cheers. What do you have? I am drinking uh, wine right out of the bottle. <laughs> Goes with the trash bag. Perfect. Yeah, it, yeah. there you go. We'll uh, be in the gutter before the show's custom, over. Custom wine stopper that I bought because I hate, I, I'm usually a big fan of jamming the corks in the top, mm -hmm. but you can pick these up on Amazon and they work very, very well. Are they rubbery or silicone? Uh, yes, they are with a little little ridge at the end there. I don't Love see. it. I have one that I bought that's hand cut glass and it's in the shape of a unicorn uh -huh. creature and it's pearlescent, but it doesn't work. One of those would work much better because of the silicone rubbery stuff. I'm a big fan of buying, when I when I buy stuff of, off of Amazon, uh, buying the stuff that actually says Amazon's cho choice, meaning number one choice for wine stoppers. Okay, so, so basically you fall for any sort of advertising. No, 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 I, I no, I, no, no. Not, no Trusted and tested across the globe, Mark Sargent's like. You know what, screw Sold. you, I'm drinking some wine, there we go. 
Anyway, hello to everybody in the live chat. We are going to talk Flat Earth, but this is just a bit of fun and games. That's what The Secret Show is all about. It's a lighthearted look at Flat Earth, and sometimes we have theme shows, and today we've got the Trash Bag Show. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? And I know trolls will say I look trashy and blah, 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 jokes about trash. But let me tell you about people who hate on other Flat Earthers. The best thing to do if uh, you're mm, scrolling through Flat Earth and you see videos that hate on fellow Flat Earthers, ignore them. Here's why. When you do, it starves them out, and the trash takes itself out. Oh, sort of a trash theme. It's a trash theme. Yeah, I think that's, that's where about I found this, this bottle. It was in, actually in, the, in trash. the trash. <laughs> and you like you ripped it out of some guy's hand who was <laughs> exactly <laughs> trying to stay warm. Oh, all right, all right. It was actually in a wino's hand next to a dumpster. I said, "Give me that." He goes, "Make me." And then I slapped him around. Funny. Um, I want to say hello to those in the live chat before we get going with the actual Flat Earth topic that this show actually contains. Hello to DITRH. She says, first, he's far from first. Shout out to Ace McLeod. Hello to Josh, Josh from Oregon and Arwen and Karen B who says, I love when the trash takes itself out. You know, you know it. Hello to Wint James and Street, S-T-R-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-
And then when you reconnect, you're like, why didn't we talk last time? Anyway, um, John Watson, uh, VV171, Jason Loras, uh, Lizard Lip 66, Top Hill, Gabe Ramirez. Oh, people are voting one that the dress was good. Um, well, thank you. Hopefully it'll stay on for the show. If not, don't worry. I will make sure there's no wardrobe malfunction that anybody actually sees. Um, Ebon Kim says, stop dressing so trashy. <laughs> uh, of course, somebody would have to say that. Uh, hello to a couple other people, X Heliocentric. And uh, let me scroll up. Mr. Alt is here. Mr. Alt, uh, formerly Stephen Chess. Check his channel out. He's in the um, live chat. So if you see his channel with Kermit the Frog, you know it's him. So subscribe to his channel. He's doing some pretty cool stuff. He says he's doing a predictive model of the sun and moon in the phases and position of each. And it's quite simple, really, he says, which is pretty neat. Um, hello to Mac Johnson. Couple more shout outs and then we'll kind of get on with the show. Um, Matthew Eugene Rosa, hello. Duck Michael, hello. Um, Liz Sean came in before the show started and said, isn't she supposed to wear a trash bag this episode? Should be interesting. Um, Harley Quinn is here too. Uh, Luton Nationalist asks why a trash bag? Long story, uh, rewind and you'll see why. It's one of those old expressions. Mm -hmm white trash people usually how they do the trash bag is they just cut a hole for the neck uh -huh. and then put it so it's all over your shoulders that's why it's throwing people because uh, they didn't know you were going to do again a boutique version of trash bag couture version of trash bag. exactly <laughs> hello to hangnail truth it's so good to have you back on the scene in flat earth hangnail uh he disappeared for a while and just did some soul searching and he's back so check out hangnail truth channel and subscribe and fast teddy flat earth chris van matry is here um suzette ann is here and uh, dolly daydream hello says she's jumping in and saying hi and JJ and Andrew Dexter and everyone else, love you. Thank you for being here. And we all know that in previous episodes of The Secret Show, because for some real reason, uh, for some reason that I don't quite understand, you and I are um, a love it or hate it sort of thing. Hey, it's better to be a love it or hate it sort of a thing than a thing that people are lukewarm about and don't remember and don't care. You no, know that's biblical, right? Is it? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's uh, you either be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. Mm. No, seriously, that's a very prominent. I don't know chapter and verse. Somebody in chat, give me the chapter and verse on that. But everybody in Christian knows that. Hello to the Jedi of Truth here, who says this feels like the magic mirror back in the day. And you get a little excited when Patricia says your name, and your week is ruined when she didn't see you in the magic mirror. I remember the show in America anyway, maybe in other countries they had a similar show called Romper Room. And I'm not saying that this is a children's show. Uh, we're all children at heart, I guess, in some way. But the uh, woman who hosted the show, and I was really small when I saw the show, she would look in a mirror and say, magic mirror, bibbity bobbity, I don't know something. It wasn't a magic spell or Satanism, but she would pretend to read the names of children. And I don't know if these were names of children that had written in, or she was just coming up with names that she made up, like, hello to Susie, hello Hello to David, hello to, you know, Marky, and I think it made a lot of children happy. You know, the 300 oh, yeah. Markies that were working and the 300 Susan not working, right. watching, or, you know. I mean, somebody, you could look that up. I bet you she said very few unusual names. Yes, exactly. exactly. Like uh, Balator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, no, Hannah, Hannah, Hannah Lore. Yeah, Hannah Lore. Hannah Lore. Her That's name was not said. That's an inside joke for those of you who watched Behind the Curve, yeah. insert groan here, and eye roll from me. Uh, but yeah, she was the astrophysicist woman um, who had, I think in that show, pink hair. She doesn't always have pink hair or purple She had hair. pink hair then, then she changed it to all brown right, and right. nose ring. Right, right. Anyway, so <laughs> Hannah Lore, that's her name. And, uh, yeah. So no Hannah Lores would be read off. I need to hang out with Hannah Lore, and she and I need to go have a couple of drinks, and I need to teach her what's what. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I hear you. Where's my paper bag I need for this bottle of wine? <laughs> Hello to JM Truth TV, who's here as well. Jibby Seville from Sevilla Chan is here. And um, I don't know what he's doing. Is anyone else commenting on my white gloves in chat? I'm not looking at you. No one cares about you. They only care about me and my dress. White gloves. Ooh, it's all about you. Yeah. No, no, no. Just joking. All right. Let's talk about why you've got the white gloves. People wear white gloves either when they're testing for dirt Right. Or when they're trying to show something precious. Which one is it? So as you guys know, uh, there was a company called PowerCoin that reached out to me because they made a flat earth model out of a two ounce silver coin. 
and it's actually made out of Italy and it was shipped to me in and and so I said yeah I will absolutely show it on the show and it's not even you can't even order these until uh, May and they go we will send you the freaking um, prototype and I said yeah send me the prototype so I got this box in the mail and it was one of the most, even though it's a, it's a little box, it's the most well-packed thing I have ever received in the mail ever. And I have gotten a lot of packages over the year. Uh, it doesn't even show. I had to rip off the waterproof covering. So not only things was waterproof and shockproof, it was packed so well on the inside, you could drop this thing from a 20-story building and it wouldn't even flinch what was inside it. So that being said, there goes the box. So inside said box, this is sort of like a box opening show, really. I got this little package right here. Right, and inside that package, I'm going to try to do it in one hand so I don't have to put down the microphone. I received dun, 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 a domed flat earth model right there, and I will show it off with the white glove in the light. Pull back a little because it's a little blurry. Flat earth model. I was always looking for a little uh, a little version of this that I could take with me when I went on road trips. I've been doing more of those lately. And it really caught my eye when you and I went to that interview with Jesse down at Bond Studios for the Fallen State. Because I had to bring out my little one. And it's, and it's tough because you can't really look on the inside of it. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we were out to dinner with the people in question, he had to take his phone and flashlight and shine it on the inside. But this one has got a clear doom. Hopefully you can see it very well. And it's a nice plexiglass, plexiglass case over a two ounce coin. And it shows the flat earth, which is very, very cool. And on the back, of course, it's the country that, uh, eh, I'm not gonna do it justice. You're gonna, those gloves are gonna make it slip. They need it, to have little ridges on them for grip. And so you can see, there, there's a full video of this on my channel with a guy that does a, a, a close up display. It's very, very cool, mm -hmm. but it's neat. And so I'm really excited. I'm going to keep this with me in my bag. And so I can break it out to show people. It's like, well, what, what are we talking about? The little globe versus the flat earth model. It's like, well, you know what? This is not a bad representation. It's not completely accurate, but I love the colors. I love uh, the way it, you know, it's, it's set up. It's, it's perfect. Exactly what I wanted. And it does represent the model that Mark favors. So yes. there are many who don't favor that model. And I get that. I understand that. Um, I'm very model um, agnostic. And I don't know what the model of the earth is, but I do think we have to be enclosed. And I'm open to any other ideas that come across my way, being that I interview people. Uh, all sorts of different models have presented themselves. And sure. I can't uh, claim one is right or one is wrong. So I don't. The only thing, the reason why I'm wearing white gloves is because uh, when you take it out of its case, you're not supposed to touch the silver surface with, your, with the oil of your fingers. Now, I don't have to wear the white gloves right now. They ship them to me, whatever. I'm not exactly encouraging people to rush out and buy these things. Uh, they are not cheap <laughs> at all. And also, uh, PowerCoin isn't, they're not a flat earth company. They're no, just no, company. it's not a flat earth company. They make coins for all sorts of stuff. But I was really impressed that the fact that unsolicited, they went out and made a flat earth coin. You know, of all the topics they want to make, they, uh, you know, they made this thing and it's pretty damn cool. And of course, why wouldn't you? It's, it's perfect for what they do. Right, Remember, right. If it's flat and round, oh my God, marketing, you could market this thing so many different ways. It's just oh, the go. same way that Behind the Curve got into making a documentary, quote unquote, about Flat Earth. It's trending and they're wanting to make money. So, hey, you right. know, it happens. Although a sequel is going to be tough for them at this point. They'll never make a sequel. However, we could offer up all the things for them, including um, demonstrations that... Um, that would work right. because so much has changed since 2017. Um, new improved things happen all the time. And right. unfortunately at that time, things were different than they are now and they'll be different next year, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Uh, but we're working on it and I'm not saying I'm working on it. I'm just saying flat earthers are working on it. The ones who do those sorts of things. Patricia's working on it. She has an entire research lab at her disposal. Actually I do. And I make dresses out of trash bags. So I'm yeah. really amazingly talented, but on the surface, I'm just a mild mannered radio gal. Yeah, whatever. I got the call from the seamstress seamstresses when you gave it to them and they buzzed <laughs> me and said, are you kidding me? I said, look, it's whatever what she wants. And yeah, so they made it <laughs> anyway. So, um, we did an interview yesterday. You didn't do your Strange World show. You, you came in at the tail end. 
Explain why while I okay. So beverage. I was double booked, and normally I do. Uh, Strange World takes a priority, but I've gotten so many interview requests. As I've already done two interviews this morning before this show, and right after we're done with this, I'm jumping into another one. Uh, that you and I were booked to do John's Arcade, which is a decent sized YouTube channel and website, and he doesn't even do conspiracy stuff on a regular basis. And he called us up and said, Look, can you do a show on Tuesday night, the exact same time that Strange World is? So I reluctantly, almost regrettably, let Karen B and Brian, Master Gunner from the United States Army, uh, take over the show for the first 90 minutes. And then I came in to, you know, pick up the pieces and put out the fires. <laughs> And no, Karen did extremely well. Honestly, Karen should be doing this all the time. She I mean, Karen's good. voice, she could talk about anything. I'd watch, I'd listen. Oh, she's freaking black velvet. I mean, <laughs> I mean seriously, she could do that all the time. Seriously, she could do late night radio easily. And she's intelligent, so that, you know, it's not just about how she's. Yeah, sort of. I heard that. I don't know if it's true. Yeah. But, th but anyway, so because of that, you and I did the interview, which is up on my channel. And if you want to open your it's channel, it's also um, in the description box of this video in case you want to hear it. One of the more hectic interviews I've done. Oh my gosh, it was, well, John's Arcade, they're a video gaming channel, I guess. Yes, video gaming channel. Uh, uh, John is the one who said he liked the Smiths. They saw Behind the Curve. Right. And he liked the Smiths because the Smiths albums featured in Behind the Curve because they filmed me in this room. So he mentioned albums he liked and I liked. So, you know, he was very friendly. But the other two people he had with him were, um, I don't know, it was like being in a barn with clucking hens. <laughs> Hard to get a word in it, or They're, watching people jump rope and getting ready for that moment where you could jump in, talking over each other. and The, the dead air was almost non-existent to right. where, I mean, the girl, so it was two guys, and two men and women. The, the, the woman was, she was more open. Uh, and mm -hmm. then the other guy was definitely closed down. He was right. like, he, you, he was digging in his heels and it's like, no, science. So it actually worked out pretty well for us. And so Patricia and I went up against them and we bounced a whole bunch of topics off in rapid fire. And, and I thought it went well. For the most I part. thought it went as well as anything can go where there are people who aren't flat earthers who haven't really researched the topic. But the thing is, is that once you put that idea in people's head who's, who've never heard about it, They'll hopefully do their own research. Their audience will. Forget about them. Their audience will. I don't mean every single person, but some will. That's what this is all about. And they might not today. They might not next week. But then when they see something else about Flat Earth and then something else about Flat Earth, and you know it's out there, they'll put it together and then they'll finally look into it. Some of them. But right. uh, as for the show hosts, uh, maybe the main guy might. He might have already. But the other two, I think it's a lost cause. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. They can make fun of us all we all they want. In fact, when you step up as a flat earther and put your face and name out there, you're pretty much painting a target on your forehead. Right. And we do it willingly. We get made fun of. We get belittled even by our own side. Right. But the the truth is what's most important. And you know, we took some blows last night in that uh, in that um, uh, interview. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. Flat Earth is winning. Right. And look, it was it happened because of the documentary. It was yet another channel that had nothing to do with conspiracies that was talking about it. Remember, look at all the other channels that have happened so far. You know, puzzle making channel, a cake cake channel, cake baking channel, a cigar rating channel, and then a video game channel. And now they have a late night show, which they're thinking of bringing us on. And I can't remember the name. It's like after midnight or something like that. Mm -hmm. On their on their podcast, which I think would be kind of fun, and where they delve more into it, but the fact that the head of this, John, was willing to do this, hey, great, fantastic. I mean, you know, he made that leap. It's like, yeah, let's talk about it, right on, and I, I enjoyed it. It was short though. the The problem was is they condensed so much into what thirty minutes. Yeah, we weren't able to give full explanations of anything. We had to just jam it in there between when they were talking, but it's mostly for their audience, yeah. and you know, with behind the curve. When they filmed with me and when they filmed with everyone else in it, we did a lot of talk about as much facts as we could get out there. But of course, the makers decided not to use that and they decided to make it a human interest story instead. So none of that was in the documentary. Right. Just like we didn't give complex explanations to these people because we had to get it out in 10 seconds before they interrupted. Right. But we, we gave them food for thought. I don't. I don't mind the little sound bites. I can do it nowadays. I mean, I've done so many of these. I can. I can crank it out. But yeah, little little hectic. So if you guys are listening to it, don't get all. I mean, it it probably stressed people out just to listen to it. It was stressful. It was like having 
I don't drink Red Bull, but it would be like drinking a bunch of Red Bull and a bunch of coffee and then being a barn in a barn with a bunch of clucking chickens with phones ringing. <laughs> That's what it's like, I swear. Whoa. Listen for yourself and you tell me I'm mm. tell me I'm not right. Um, okay, so a story that has come out and has gained a lot of traction within the Flat Earth community. It's come out on multiple different platforms that Earth's air supply may reach nearly 400,000 miles into space. Right. So far that the moon constantly flies through it. Right. We have heard this story. Right. Uh, they're saying space begins at about 62 miles, 100 kilometers above the surface of Earth. And our planet's air supply stretches farther than this. Right. Um, and the funny thing about this story, it was a, I mean, this is not real. Okay. We all know that, but they quote unquote scientists say guys in white coats say, um, that uh, a new analysis of data recorded by a spacecraft more than 20 years ago have found that the outer fringes of our planet's atmosphere stretch far be behind, beyond what was imagined. Right. And they say Earth's supply of hydrogen gas, the lightest air molecule on the periodic table, may extend nearly 400,000 miles out. And they say that that reaches and encompasses the moon. Yeah. So what does that mean about the atmosphere on the moon? It, it means nothing. It's a nothing story. Well, it's a nothing it story built upon, you know, false assessments and et cetera. Yeah, it, it gets, it muddies the waters in terms of, it doesn't, it doesn't help us necessarily because it, it shows the general public that, oh, maybe space isn't what we think it is. And I bet you that somebody down the road, it will not take long when we bring up gravity versus the vacuum of space, will bring that up. It's like, no, no, I read an article that actually the right. atmosphere extends part, you know, out to the moon. It's well, they're like, no. seeding our consciousness, not us, because we're aware, but most right. everyone, right. with these false stories. They, they serve as a twofold. One of them is what you're talking about, and the other one is just general space programming that 20 years ago, somebody took a picture of something, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, we're in space. We're a space-faring nation, etc. So um, that whole story is more space garbage, I guess we could call it. Right. Um, but the funny part about this is that um, there was Russia was involved in it too. I'm scanning through the story I have on my phone. I've lost, of course, lost that little bit of the story. But mm -hmm. um, they said a team of researchers, researchers, including somebody with a um, Russia Space Research Institute in Moscow, said in a European Space Agency press release, we were not aware of it until we dusted off observations made over two decades ago by the, by the SOHO spacecraft. Right. So they just found this. Um, yeah. yeah, now, just now. Right, no. guess why? Hey, hello, Flat Earth's here. That's right. Exactly. Anyway, uh, we are not amused, we are not entertained, and most of all, we are not fooled. No. My dress makes a crackling sound when I move. I sound like I'm like wading through a box of Rice Krispies cereal or whatever you call them in your country. I don't... I don't mean your country. Well, we're, we're in the same country. Yeah, but there's others <laughs> who are watching from Australia and New Zealand oh, okay. right. and the entire UK. Good. You know. Yep. And here's to you. Thank you for watching. Yes. And, oh, we've had some heavy trolling, I noticed, when I was scrolling through comments. Oh, using that Tons cool. of sock accounts and re-asking the same question about another channel that has absolutely nothing to do with you and I, other than we've watched that channel before. Right. Um, and they keep making the comment and getting blocked and deleted. And of course that gives another thumbs down because these are stock accounts. So anyway, whatever, news to them, doesn't matter. Yep. yep, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, thanks for the view. I'll get a bunch of thumbs down and weirdly enough, YouTube changes that the next day. Now, how does YouTube change it? That's a good question. What? You know, when you get a bunch of thumbs down from a bunch of sock accounts, Oh. The next day, how does YouTube determine those are sock accounts and reevaluate the thumbs up, thumbs down? Oh, because I put in a request. I, you know, do the whole thing. I say, you know, from this department, blah, blah, blah. No, but I mean, do they just know it's sock accounts? Well, yeah, they've got algorithms to figure it out. It's mm. not hard. It's, they're not, they're better than they used to be. About Yeah, that used to not happen. In the past right. year, that's changed. Yeah. Uh, one thing YouTube yeah. done... Right, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, it's 2019. They're going to get some things right. Mm -hmm. They're working on it. Like a broken clock. Exactly. Twice a day. Hmm. What else is coming up? Oh, you uh, and I well, got our tickets I, to New Zealand. Yeah, you and I are. Are you booked? I'm booked. I didn't get the hotel yet. 
That's right. I, we'll, I'll get the hotel probably tonight or tomorrow. We'll I've talk. never been to New Zealand. I'm super excited. Going to New Zealand. Uh, neither have I. We may run into each other at customs. And if I get there first, I will absolutely look behind me and go, I yeah, see that woman in the red. Yeah, she looked really sketchy. <laughs> I don't know what she, she's got in her bag, but she seemed really pure, preoccupied with it. Yeah, yeah. you're not getting in. No uh -oh. way. So, but if you get there first, you can make them whatever you want. Uh, that's just games. Games you can play in customs. That if you want to have some really fun though, um, if you have a friend that's going to the airport, go down to Hobby Lobby, pick up like a like a one pound block of modeling clay, and then take two AA batteries and just jam it in, sneak it into their bag. Totally funny, seriously. Well, that's good for an ex boyfriend or ex girlfriend or cheating yeah. spouse, not a friend. Yeah. Yeah, Don't yourself like. bring that stuff with you when you fly so you can do it on Mark's suitcase. <laughs> so we're <laughs> seriously, it's funny. The, the metal detector or, you know, the, the x-ray scanner, they just freak out. Anyway, a hilarity ensues. So we are going to the F-E-N-Z expo.co.nz, otherwise known as the Flat Earth New Zealand Expo. We are going to be there April 26th. We're flying in a little bit early, mm -hmm. you know, so we don't miss it because it takes like eight days to get there. And we're staying a little bit late because there's after um, expo activities and we right. want to thank Adrienne Morrison. She's putting the whole thing together. She's a Facebook friend of mine and a beautiful woman, by the way. So, um, yeah. We're, and, and we, well, I don't know if you're going to be doing the, the, the events after, but we're going to the Shire. I don't know if I really want to do that. Explain to everybody what the Shire is. Oh my is. God, come on. I tried to watch Lord of the Rings several different times got through it. I've even met Liv Tyler in person, not as a celeb, but as a friend of an ex-boyfriend of mine. I went to a sushi restaurant with her and we both had vegetable sushi, me because I'm vegan and she because she was pregnant at the time. Mm. So I've just hung out with her like a regular person, met Liv Tyler, still couldn't get through um, The Hobbit or any of that. Well, the Ho all right, The Hobbits were a little different, but Lord of the Rings back in 2000 to 2003, uh, it, it, this, this is the Shire. This is the home, the little the community of the hobbits. I liked Galadriel. Is that how you say her name? Yes. I liked her. Well, who wouldn't like her? She's cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're going to the freaking Shire, and you should go. I'll uh, go. And if you don't want to go, that's fine. You don't want to be So that's an event tacked onto the end of the expo that you can go or not go for fun. Right. Right. And then so after it's that, like going to a movie studio set or what? No, 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 no. You no, because most of Lord of the Rings was uh, at least as far as the out, I mean, was shot outdoors. I mean, that was the big joke back when they got the Academy Awards, which was they kept thanking all the people in parks of New Zealand because they shot it in different outdoor locations. There was not as much CGI as, as people think. I mean, it was just these beautiful outdoor locations in New Zealand. So this is one of those. It's this nice little brookie area. It looks very fairy tale ish. I like that. Well, that's why I thought you might go. I just don't really like the movie. It's not that I didn't like it. I, I just always fell asleep. You don't You don't have to like the movie to go with this. You'll appreciate no, just... I'm outnumbered. Everyone's like, oh, I love that movie. Well, no. Sorry. Wh whatever. You, seriously, you'd have fun. Even if you didn't watch the movie, you'd have fun. Me, I'm different because I'm be like geeking out. It's like, oh my God, that's where Frodo stood. But I know. You'll be like, I don't want to be next to him. I'll, I'll be, be enjoying like, nature. I'll enjoy nature. Where's course. Samwise? Where's Legolas? Uh, yeah, I don't even know who those people are. I know Galadriel because she's beautiful, and I like that. Of act. course, because you would only just nice dresses with the, with the beautiful Lord of no, the Rings. No, no. Why don't we just make? You know what? I'll have somebody recut the Lord of the Rings film and only show the elves. That's it, because they're all tall and thin and beautiful. That's all it is. You don't have to look at any of the ugly things, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> It'll That's just be the freaking elves. I just It'll have no impression of the film other than a couple characters and when I would wake up and like, oh, in the middle of watching it and note who's who, whatever. Why don't you in anyway. a castle somewhere? Seriously. It yeah, just... okay. Big flat earth castle. That's anyway, cool. the day after that, we're doing a boat trip, possibly, uh, near, near the city. And uh, that is dependent on the weather. And if it goes well, great, fantastic. If it doesn't, there's a backup plan. I can't remember what it is. Though. Oh, a big motorized flat bottom boat for touring sort of thing? Yeah. Oh, interesting. That'd yeah. be fun. Great way to see the city from that respect. Yeah. Do you go on many boats? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Been on boats, small boats. We had a boat when, when I grew up, but it was only a small motorboat. You know, like six people could go on it, seven people, something like that. Got it. Um, and a dock. Not know. a lot of room for servants on that boat. 
Mm. And I've been on yachts, not mine, uh, not my family. I would never accuse you of owning a yacht. I mean, you know, that's when people own boats, any sort of boats, it's a lot of maintenance. Oh, there's it's upkeep. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you own, once you get to a certain size, it might as well be a second house. I told my boat story a couple of times before. You want me to say it again? I'll say it again. Okay, here's a boat story. I think time frame wise it was in the 80s and i was living in northern california and i had a boyfriend and the boyfriend wanted me to um it was called opening day in sonoma county california in the city of sonoma where right. all the boats come out and everybody has their beautiful sailboats and they're gorgeous and people bring food and it's quite windy and a bit cold and choppy in the water and everyone you know goes out for the opening day of sailing right and i'd been sailing before but never in such choppy waters but i didn't really realize that i would get motion sickness although i as a child suffered from it on airplanes during landings anyway all the people I was with were new to me, aside from the boyfriend who wanted to introduce me to all of his friends and, you know, not, I mean, I, I knew that I not had to impress, but there was you all were, these new people. showing you off. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So I'm there and everyone's um, saying, you need to eat, you need to eat. That way you won't get motion sickness. That's so a was, lie. Well, that's what they told me. There was crackers and vegetables and there was yep. some al uh, alcohol. Um, oh, that helps. Uh, you know, Sonoma County wine shield, white wine. And I was having that and it was so fun. And then, of course, I had to use the ladies room. And so you have to go under, you know, down the stairs that's below, the below desk. deck. Right there. And see, I didn't know any of that. And as I went down below, I noticed as I passed by a sink in the kitchen um, and in that sink, they had put bags of ice in it and they were having the bottles in there, you know, to keep it cool right. um, because there was a lot of people on the boat because it was quite a large sailboat. Anyway, so I wanted to use the ladies room, but there was somebody in it. And then it hit me, motion sickness, because right. I was under the, sur the I was deck, under yeah. the deck yeah. and there was a close smell like something and I couldn't really see and, and the, the sky anymore. And it, it was just this rocking motion and I felt like I had to throw up. And so I knocked on the door to the bathroom and I said, I really need to use the bathroom. And that's like, okay, I heard a guy, okay, just a minute. And I thought, we don't have a minute here. And so I, I said, okay, I need to throw up. What am I going to do? And so I rushed to where the sink was in the kitchen. And then I realized, oh no, it's filled with bags of ice and drinks. I can't vomit in that. And so I ran back to the door of the bathroom and I, it's an emergency. And he said, okay, you know, this is a person I don't know, rushes out of the bathroom and then goes up the stairs. And I rush in there. This is a gross story. Everyone ready? The smell because of him was overwhelming. And he hadn't flushed the toilet because I had to flush a certain way, like on, on boats. I don't know, whatever. So, I've never heard this story. I thought I've told it before. But no, anyway, not me. It's not very flattering for me anyway. Anyway, so he hadn't flushed the toilet and it's horrible smell. Right. Um, and of course, I'm motion sick. And there was a sink to wash your hands, but it had a tiny pinhole for the water when you wash with right. soap and water. Right. And I said, I've got to throw up in the toilet. It's the only thing I can do. And all these thoughts are, and all these events are happening quickly. So I went to the toilet, which was filled with feces, stinking up the place. And I held my hair back and vomited in the toilet. Yeah. Then all of the sudden, the boyfriend, the loving, sweet boyfriend who thinks of me as a lady, wonderful girl, <sighs> knocks on the door, asks me if I'm okay, and I say, yeah. And then I realize if I open the door, he said, I'll wait out here for you. If I open the door, there will be a horrendous stench coming out, right? which wasn't me. And oh. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to flush the toilet because the guy before me clogged it up. Oh my God. So I had to come out and tell him this. And of course it sounds like a lie and it was humiliating. So that's my and he broke up with you on the spot. Good night, everybody. No, that didn't happen. But oh, wow. it was humiliating. And here's to that moment in time. Wow. Moments like that. Yeah. A uh, little tip for, for people, because I do, even though I grew up on the water, uh, yeah, going below deck, that's the that's where you have problems. They say if you're moderately motion sickness, you got to stay on deck because it's your eyes. It's your eyes. When you're below deck, you can't get a, a reference point. And so all of a sudden you are, you're going to succumb to it. So in fact, I knew, I learned that when I was young, I was 13 and uh, I was in a sailboat and we were bored because all the adults were playing on deck and this is down in the Virgin Islands. And I went below deck to play cards, cards. So I'm staring at these little dots on the cards and I started feeling it. And the captain knew exactly what to do. He goes, come up on deck. And I, I came up on deck. He goes, just sit here for a while. And then I was fine. For a while some people are worse than others though 
Some, if it gets really, really heavy, like if you're doing deep sea fishing out in rough waters, there's nothing you can do. You either have it or you don't. So. Well, when I went back up on deck, I still felt ill because of the smell and the motion sickness, although I'd vomited. And of course, it was just all those crackers and pieces of vegetable and wine that they told me to drink that probably didn't help. Right. But I was there, you know, and it was very rough. And I was on deck in the wind, which was quite helpful. But right. because it's opening day, I forgot to add this insult to injury. Opening day in uh, in Sonoma, when they, they take off the, the, the ships and go under the Golden Gate Bridge, when mm -hmm. the, when the not ships, um, sailboats, when the boats get close to each other, all the wonderful people have water balloons that they throw at the other uh, sailboats. And of course, you know, I'm getting pelted by water balloons. I feel like I want to die. I'm humiliated Why because of my boyfriend. Why on this trip at all? <laughs> oh. This is not, this does not sound like you. I'm sorry. No, it's fun. It was, it's a really nice time to go like out, it. opening day, sailboats. It's just that, you know, I've been told since then there's things that you can do. There's special motion sickness wristbands that you can wear. And that would and have helped. Pills and patches. And yeah. But yeah, at that yeah. time, I thought I was able to handle it and I wasn't. Well, then. Somebody in live chat says, um, well, good thing you weren't on the ISS. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's amazing how steady that thing is. Wonder if on the ISS, if it really existed. You mean like it ever would you existed? Get motion sickness. No. Okay. No, because uh, that's different. Uh, motion sickness is because you know, like airplane turbulence, which you you run into from time to time. Mm -hmm. That's almost the same because remember it, uh, what we're breathing is basically a thin version of water. Uh, the only difference is that turbulence is invisible, so you can't see it coming. But yeah, when you hit it, it's just like hitting shop when you're on a in a boat. Mm. No different. I mean, a little bit different because you're three dimensional space versus two. That doesn't really matter. <sighs> what else is new in the flat Earth world that's at least worth discussing? Um, hmm. Not much. Thanks everyone for being here. <laughs> I'm gonna go out dancing in this dress. Oh, let me think. Hang on. One second. So, oh, I just uh, noticed that, you know, I don't have a lot of subscribers, but I love every one of the subscribers and I've been here since 2015. And because of a lot of false drama created about me, um, my subscribers haven't grown as fast as they should. But today I'm at 17,993 subs at this very second in time. So Patricia in about a minute. Subs. That's our goal here, people. <laughs> it's pledge drive. Seven subs to get Patricia to 18,000. Wouldn't that Free be stock accounts right now. Get three sock accounts. <laughs> hey, you sock accounts who were in here earlier, <laughs> give if them the thumbs down. Seriously, if I'll you bet. haven't subbed, whoever, seriously, here's what's going to happen. When whoever gets the 18,000 sub, uh, Patricia is going to take to a candlelight dinner somewhere in the Houston area. No, I'm not. No? <laughs> no. No, you sure? I'm pretty sure that's on my script. No. You're supposed no. to. Anyway, no, I'm, I'd am i be happy for you when you hit 18,000. I'm, mm. I'm, and it's you've been, been doing well. I'm coming. Since regardless of how the documentary has gone, you've done well since then. Oh, well, the documentary has brought a lot of attention to many of the Flat Earth channels that were featured in it, even if all of us who were featured in it aren't happy with the way it came out and it's not what they told us they were going to do, but right. we're making the best of it. Right. But yet we've uh, received lots of emails that we weren't receiving before. We've received friend requests on Facebook. We've received new subscribers um, and lots of requests for interviews. And interest has been drummed up by that stupid documentary. So in the end, as bad as it seems now, I'm thinking it's going to, okay, it's, it's going to do, believe me or not, it may do more good than harm. Because when you think about it, the people who are watching the documentary who believe they live in a globe, just like we all used to, never doubted it. They go in there thinking as they even sit in their movie seats, or excuse me, not movie seats, as they sit in their seat at home to go watch Netflix documentary, the flat earthers are crazy. Flat earthers are stupid, that right. they're, you know, whatever. They didn't get an education and they don't know science. That's what they think before they hit play. Right. So if at the very end they still think that, nothing lost, nothing, no, no problem. True. But for the people there who think, you know what, these people seem intelligent and maybe it looked like somebody proved a curve or not. I don't quite understand what went on there, but they're so adamant. There's got to be something to this. Let me look into it. Right. Then those people will be on the train like we all went on. That leads you to only one conclusion, which is the earth is 
motionless. The earth is flat. And that's where people are going and that's who's writing and that's who's, that's who's subscribing. I mean, so in the end, maybe we'll look back on behind the curve and, and all the anger it's caused and all the false accusations it's caused against those who were in it, all with very good hearts, by the way, and all unpaid. Um, that we were, did it for the, for the good of all. Yeah. And not that we're saints, not that we couldn't have done a better job, but you don't know what else we did because they left a lot on the cutting room floor. Yeah. And I know that because a lot of what I said didn't make it to the film. Oh, come on. I mean, they shot for seven months and yeah. they whittled, whittled it down to a hundred minutes. Right. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, even with the, the deleted scenes on iTunes, there's still so much left out. Some deliberately, some not. Right. But, yeah. Anyway, so in the end, I'm looking at the glass half full, not half empty. And here's to that. Regardless, flat earth remains, regardless of any hit piece that comes out, any debunker that comes out. And I'm not saying that all of us will hang on to flat earth if proven that we live on a globe, but we don't have any proof we live on a globe. We only have stories. We only have lies. We only have liars. So until then. By the way, do, you're going to tell me what you're drinking? Yeah, yes, I think I already did. Um, this is an organic strawberry, and we've got organic cranberry juice and vegan vodka, not filtered through a fish's swim bladder. Huh. The vodka was in the freezer, and I'm almost done. I need to get a new bottle. I've been using the same vodka bottle since you and I started doing shows where we had cocktails, which is couple of year, a couple of years. That takes a lot. So, I'm a slim drinker. Are... I'm a... Yeah. Tea, teetotaler? Is that what it is? You're a cheap date is what you are. I never understood the term teetotaler. I could look it up. Somebody Can look it up. Drink tea? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Seriously, to, I, more than a year to go through a bottle of vodka? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm kind of a lightweight. Kind of. Um, let me see. I saw some funny comments on some of the videos that you and I have done. Um, and I, I figured maybe we could read some of them. Have you received sure. any weird comments on any of your... Uh, oh, your wait. What was that one I got? Hang on. Let me... Uh, one second. You, you, you go ahead. I'm... Uh, All right. I'm going to read this one from a guy named BackDoc121. And he made this on our last secret show, uh, this comment. He writes... And he's writing about CBD oil because I did a show on CBD oil. But he's left the post... Oh, no. He's left this post on the uh, episode 281, the one just before that, which right. is about... CBD oil with Al Morant and, and it's a good video if you're interested in health, the video right before this one. Anyway, he leaves a comment about the CBD oil and then he goes into talking about behind the curve. He writes, CBD oil works well. Half my practice is now using it. Side note, I saw behind the curve last night at the end or near the end of the program, the astrophysicist with a nose ring bashes how some can't understand research and its experts. Ask her how many studies have been found, bought, and paid for by someone with the interest in certain findings. Really good point. More than 60%, he says. I know you didn't get the opportunity to challenge her statement, Patricia, because you didn't meet her. If possible, please get me her Twitter name. I couldn't find it after the, do after the documentary. I have the ability and enough scientists as friends that will saturate her social media about her terrible and insulting comment. Lastly, obviously, the program was filmed before NASA told us the moon is inside our atmosphere. Ridiculous. He writes, slow disclosure. So maybe that story I read earlier that we've all been talking about, about the moon being inside the atmosphere, is part of slow disclosure. Maybe. I don't see how, but in the end, we'll figure out why they've been doing the things they're doing. Right. We can't see it. We're too close to it right now. Right. Let's see what else. I've got an email. Um, oh, you did? You got one too? Oh, well, you, you asked. Rare for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously. Oh. Oh, you should write that down. Okay. So it goes a little something like this. Um, so, Mark, I just watched the one documentary on Netflix and wanted to say that you're very well spoken. Well, thank you. I've looked at a bunch of the stuff you've posted. And honestly, I don't agree with you because, well, I don't need to. I think you're a pretty valid human being and you seem like a pretty nice guy. That said, I'm really only saying this because I wanted to say that you and Patricia seem to have pretty awesome chemistry with each other. And while watching the documentary, the charisma between you, uh, okay, let's face it, it's mostly me, uh, <laughs> you two is plainly obvious. I know there was hinting that you two might be a thing or whatever, but if you aren't, 
and it's something you'd like to do. I hope it works out because you both are terribly adorable together. Uh, That's nice. Uh, I hope that it all works out for you men and from one globe head to you too. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, thanks for, for your time. And if you end up reading this and uh, if possible, that chicken noodle soup, soup looked super great if you want to steal it for me from your mom. <laughs> That's nice. I love that scene when your mom is dishing out soup she made. Uh, yeah. Dan Daniel and the team never ate so good. Yeah, you fed Daniel with your mom's cooking. I right. took Daniel out to eat. He stayed at Bob and Cammy's house. He stayed at your guest house. And what did he do in return? Smacked us upside the head. <laughs> but well, no good deed goes unpunished. But yet, I'm making the best of it. I'm making the best of it. I hear you. I Thank absolutely you. hear you. Here's a comment that I received on one of our older videos of all things. When you uh, and I got together, I came to Seattle and we walked around um, the, the ferry there and we, we did a video. It's an older video. Somebody writes one day ago named Sherry BB. I don't believe the earth is flat, but I like to watch your videos because you must be you and Mark. It must be that you and Mark are good people. The kind of people I'd like to spend a few hours talking with or having fun with at a party. Good luck in your search for truth. I'm from France, and the only thing flat here is the popularity of M. Macron, and then a laughing face. Hmm. And I don't know who that is because I don't really know French politics. But there's another person who's come along in the past day or so and has come along and watched Flat Earth videos. Now, they are saying, they're, this person is saying they're not a Flat Earther, but what you doing on a Flat Earth video? Guess what? If you're watching a Flat Earth video, you the stuff's going to seep in. It's true. It, it's, we're drip feeding it to you. The earth is flat. Right. Drip, drip. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're going to take some in through osmosis. No question. Uh, mm -hmm. The documentary was brilliant at that because, remember, the first 30 minutes, you didn't believe it. And by, you know, by the 100 minute mark, even though you know there's some problems, it's in your head. Right. And that's the first place that it has to go before it goes into your thoughts, your dreams, and then into action. Right. And then you get to do a channel, you start doing activism, you make songs, you uh -huh. go to meetups, or you Recruiting. just stay at home yeah. and <laughs> and you you participate in live chats. Yeah. And enjoy the company of people of like mind. Sure. Here's another one from Federation 42. This one came two days ago on our secret show of a week ago. He writes, I love the documentary and I personally don't believe that it portrayed Mark or Patricia or anyone badly. Admittedly, I'm not a believer in the flat earth theory. I'm so far convinced the earth is an oblate sphere. Notwithstanding this, I find Mark and Patricia to be really likable, genuine people. Hence, my watching this video here. I think that Mark is particularly pragmatic in his reflection of how the documentary came across. Patricia, less so, unfortunately, because I'm always the one saying, boo, and you're always the one saying, yay, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, he writes this. It's fair to say, quote, don't cling to a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it, unquote. And that right. is something said by Aubrey de Graff. I don't know who that is either. Hmm. So I could go on and on with other comments from flat earthers and from people who are new to the whole concept who are now watching flat earth videos. Right. And um, we welcome you with open arms. You don't have to be flat to watch this. You don't have to be flat to participate in this chat. I have friends who believe in the globe. Just like as a vegan, I have friends who eat meat. I eat meat sitting across the table from them because I was them before I became vegan. I, I was them before I became a flat earther. I have, I have empathy for the whole situation. I'm not going to condemn and call anybody a liar or a scammer just because they, um, just because they are believing in something that they were taught by their parents in the school system. Right. They just haven't got down the rabbit hole far enough. And I hope they do. True. Good. Somebody's asking why so many thumbs down. No, I can't see the thumbs down, but I know it's a traditional thing. Um, the sock accounts that were in here earlier, you know. It's they're... because people hate Patricia. Mm -hmm. They don't really hate me. And actually the thumbs down would be much, much worse if I was not on the show. But <laughs> that's okay. No, no. I come on. The haters, uh, you know, the the wise words of Taylor Swift. Taylor, uh, you know, haters gonna hate, 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 hate. They are. There's nothing you can do to stop it. And right. we're getting under we're getting under somebody's skin apparently, because uh, you know if they wanted it's like if they were just gonna wave us off, it's like pff, they're nothing. Then they wouldn't be here. 
So please, right. by all means, create all sorts of hate. And the thing about the thumbs is I could take them away if I wanted and have there be no thumbs up or thumbs down. Right. It's something that I could do if I wanted to. But personally, I don't care if I have 600 thumbs down and one thumb up or the opposite. Yeah. Because that doesn't affect my sanity, my ego, my sense of well-being, who I am as a person, you uh, knew my, or this channel even. You knew my channel had, for six months, the first six months had no thumbs and no comments allowed, and you knew who told, talked me out of it? Jonathan from Jersey. Jonathan from Jersey. Jonathan, absolutely right. Oh, you know, we were going to talk about that on a show, several shows past, but we never got to it. What? Some have said Jonathan from Jersey was dead. I said I don't think so, just because I don't feel he is. And then somebody said his channel showed action on it recently. Well, neither my team nor your team killed him. So it's like, okay, how'd he die? Uh -huh. Natural causes? Come on. When does that happen? So has his channel been reinvigorated? Is he from, back? From what I, I have looked, and from what I understand, after 26 months, there is now new activity on his channel. Good. What kind of activity? I uh, he released a new audio video. What's which, it about? Uh, I didn't listen to the whole thing. It was it wasn't flat Earth related. Okay. So the What's question, his the question is: Is he talking to anybody, and is he trying to get back into the game? Because you know he's he was there in 2015. Obviously, right. I mean he was. In fact, he was one of the people that was screen tested for Rebecca for True TV. Mm. And you know, so if he, heck, if if anybody could get back in, he could. So why isn't he? What? Well, maybe he just doesn't want the stress in the household. I mean, you know, it comes with a price to be a flat earther. That's true. Maybe he doesn't completely believe. But I'm just saying he could he could totally get back in if he wants. Well, he was an early adopter of the concept anyway, for sure. He was. I mean, so, and, and remember, he was, I before I did solo Strange World episodes, he was my right-hand guy. He was my right. wingman. Mm -hmm. I liked yeah. you and he together. He interviewed me for... One of my birthdays several years back, and he brought in the village people to sing to me, which was right. crazy. Some and it's still on my channel, by the way. Village people. <laughs> it was so right. one of the village people, anyway. Right. So weird. It was it was a cool birthday though. Um, hard, hard what's his me. channel name though? I want to look him up. I forgot. Uh, I don't remember. Come on. I Is don't. it Jonathan from Jersey? <laughs> no, it's not Jonathan from Jersey. Somebody find out where Jonathan's channel is now. Uh, Put it in the friggin' chat. Uh, but I, I'd love to talk to him again. I mean, you know, we we didn't exactly uh, end on good terms, but that was for a completely different thing. You know, when people get in arguments on the but flat wasn't earth, my argument. Well, it doesn't matter who started it. It doesn't matter no. who thought who was wrong or who was. I wasn't right. even. No, 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 no. I wasn't even part. Oh, of you're the being argument. defensive now, sir. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know you're not. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Everyone's memory here. He decided to post a thing on a certain person's Facebook page saying why right. I'm leaving flat Earth. Screw everyone. I'm taking my football and going home. Right. And and it was had nothing to do with his disbelief in flat Earth. It was right. you know, a personal thing between somebody and somebody else. And he called me out on it. And I, I had to find out secondhand. It's like, you see what Jonathan's saying about you? It's like, what? What the hell? And, you know, anyway. I have no idea what caused somebody to flip like that. However, in Flat Earth, when there are disagreements right. and people are pointing fingers, rightly so, and people are struggling to try to be their best selves and put out the best information they can, and they see somebody else is not putting out the best information they can, but then that person thinks they are and thinks the other person is trying to take them down. Right. In reality, when we step back and take a breath, I don't mean this with everybody in Flat Earth, but a large percentage, we are hashtag same team. And in time, rifts hopefully can be mended because we are hashtag sane team. Right. And I encourage people to just, it doesn't mean you got to love each other, but. You see this with just about every episode. We're such a small group. Well, I mean, the ones that are active on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, we're, come on. How, how got many the countries? closet flat earthers. Yeah. How many countries do we stretch and how many conferences are this year? There's a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. We should probably talk about that. It's uh, mm -hmm. the new conference. You we, you don't even know yet. Maybe I do. Uh, uh, so the Toronto conference was put on hiatus because Robbie's doing so many things at this point that he can't do everything. Uh, you know, he's doing he's doing other conferences and he's trying to put together his own documentary. And so he said, ah, Toronto, I just don't have time. I can't do it. 
And then immediately, because he announced that he, well, didn't announce, but he told people when we were down in LA and immediately, um, some women who I think you met, uh, Sarah and Lisa, the, the Canadians that from Alberta, they jumped in and she's going to do a little mini conference in Calgary at the middle or middle of May. So. Uh, in fact, it's going to be called, you're probably saying, Mark, what's it called? Well, I'm glad you asked. I will tell you, it is called the Truth Quest Calgary. Calgary then. Yes, which we have been to. Yes, I like Calgary. I like everywhere I've gone so far with Flat Earth. Right. In fact, so there's really only one or two places on Earth I've been that I don't like at all. Um, one of them is a place in the Central Valley of California. And if you were born here or live here, I'm very sorry. But it's called Los Baños, the name of the city, Los Baños. It literally means the bathroom. Enough said. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going to be May 17th and 18th in Calgary. I don't think, I don't even know if they have a website yet, but it's being called Truth Quest Calgary. I know that Robbie's going to be there because, you know, he's from Canada. And Matt Long, he's trying to be Canadian. Uh, Jared Cressman and some other people. Anyway, so it's just being—it's just getting rolled out now. I'm going to be attending, and so when I get back from New Zealand, I'm gonna have like a week or so off, and then jump up to Calgary for a few days. Check that out. Interesting. Uh, if you, it, I'll send you the details. I mean, ju it just got—it just got rolled out, and that was because of the Toronto conference. Uh, is not going to be happening in Toronto. Uh, instead, you know, as as you know, we've got the UK conference, we've got the Amsterdam conference, the New Zealand conference, and then Dallas. But before that, uh, in fact, right after New Zealand, we have Calgary. Cool. Yeah. <sighs> the thing about all these events are, you can't you can't catch them all. <laughs> no, you're not going to be able to catch them all. I mean, but that's I don't know. that's all right. I, I'm well officially I'm not even uh, I'm not even on the Amsterdam list and I'm not I mean I was invited to go to the English I English one no <laughs> English, no you weren't no, the you weren't. England the nope, one in England nope, no you weren't but I haven't even responded yet well well you, you probably shouldn't because that was just kind of a courtesy thing I already told him <laughs> I go Patricia's going <laughs> you're not going <sighs> it's like, mm. out of it uh anyway so yeah that'll be fun that'll be kind of cool did I tell you what I um who I talked to this morning. The secret celeb flat earther and his wife? No. Okay. Not. No. How's it going? Have you spoke with them about well, the secret well, project okay. that might happen? One, one, I don't even know if their servants wake them up until you know a certain <laughs> hour uh, with <laughs> with harps and, and things. Uh, no, no. I spoke with uh, two people. Uh, one was the woman that wrote the Texas Tech article on that the guardian picked up about how youtube is has created flat earth you know has been the vehicle for flat earth i don't know if you've been seeing some of those headlines around recently uh her name is ashley mm -hmm. and we we talked for a couple hours and i, I didn't record well, i recorded it but i'm not going to use it i'm not going to put it online at her request uh, but it was really nice we we talked about the article and she's making her uh, she's writing a full-blown paper on this she has a phd and she actually attended the, um, well, she had lab assistants go to Raleigh and Denver without anyone, you know, secretly. And wow. so she, yeah, so that was kind of cool. And then after that, I talked with Chief Self High School. I, for whatever reason, I don't know if because I'm approachable or it's because I'm adorable. I don't know. But what happened was <laughs> they, uh, adorable. They <laughs> you are kind of adorable. You have nice blue eyes. People call this me flirting with him or him flirting with me, but really, you have beautiful blue eyes. And, I tell you, you know that. What? Patricia calls it as she sees it. Patricia no, you do have beautiful blue eyes. Well, okay. and it's not flirting. I'm just saying it. How I, I know, because I know you don't flirt. I know this. Yeah, I might. No, uh, you really don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're really objective when about it. I like this and I like that. Mm -hmm. But you don't say, ooh, I like that. Yeah. You don't do that. No, I don't. No. I need to. I need to unleash my sexy. You know, <laughs> I'm just so pragmatic. It's a bit hard. So, oh, well, come on. Again, castle queen. Disney queens don't do that. They generally, you know, bring me the girl. <laughs> Not the girl. 
well, bring not, me the man not for that no bring me the girl so i can kill her and then bring me the prince so i can and usually they don't even do anything with the prince it's like just throw him in the dungeon it's like what does, does the queen and does <laughs> disney queen have any fun anyway another mm -hmm. another story for another time so i talked with chief self high school in seattle washington and i've had since the documentary came out a number of high schools that have contacted me for whatever reason they are reaching out and and saying in fact uh, not only am i looking at the list uh i like i have one tomorrow morning in australia in perth perth's in australia right yeah and uh another one from uh, pennsylvania and um uh, well college from from shoreline uh but i also had one to get this a uh, one a high school in chicago that wanted to fly me in to do a presentation to the kids and I don't going to anger some people. Uh, yeah, and I warned him. I said, "Man, that's a great idea, and I really appreciate it. But you got to." And I, I sent him a copy of the documentary. I said, "Look, you've got to run this by your administration before you think of this. I do not want to get up there and start talking, and all of a sudden I start see people, you know, adults coming in from the wings. You know, you're looking to your sides. It's like you're having to speed up really fast. And you know, eight inches of brown squared. Uh, do your own research. Good night, everybody. And get dragged <laughs> off. You know, flat Earth. Flat Earth. <laughs> you don't do that right so but isn't that weird i thought it was strange and then you well, and i are doing a, a christian university interview with uh, calvary university yes 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 so, yeah. lots of good things happening and um lots of interesting emails coming in to me um i'll read just a couple of them i always forget to read emails and then they become so outdated i can't read them um this is too many especially lately um this one is from jose ortiz whose headline is Flat Earth and Moz. Moz is the nickname for Morrissey, the lead singer of the Smiths. And people know that I like the Smiths because if there's been photos of me here, that has always been behind me. And also in Behind the Curve, the Morrissey albums were on, on display because I was standing in this room. He simply writes, love your YouTube videos. Love that you love the Smiths and cats just like I do. Heart 100. So that's a really cool one. Very little brief, brief one. Another one about Morrissey, Flat Earth, that's the subject. Hi, Miss Steer. I saw Beyond the Curve. Beyond the Curve. Okay. Yeah, people say that a lot. They <laughs> screwed. They, if they're going to screw it up, that's what they say. Uh -huh. I want them to say there is no curve. I'd like that to be the title. Anyway, oh well. Um, he says, I saw Beyond the Curve and love that you pointed out your admiration for Morrissey. Morrissey and the Smiths saved my life. I'm 38 and have been a diehard fan since I was 13. As I get older, his music only resonates with me all the more. I just want to thank you for giving Moz some attention with the time you had on Be On The Curve. So that's cool. And um, then we have this from Len Mooring. He writes, Behind the Curve and Other Things is the subject. Truly, Patricia, you don't really have to be very concerned that Flat Earth is portrayed negatively at all in um, BTC, um, Behind the Curve. I think it's only because you are so invested in it that you see the faults at all. My friend, who sometimes argues with me on the Effie topic, yawned her way through the film and didn't pounce on anything. On the other side, regarding romantic love and what can be its rapid deterioration is all about sin. I smile as I write this as an atheist, but it's true. See how flat earth atheists, they do exist. A sin could be defined as a violation of an ethical standard one sets for oneself or others. One, exam uh, one examining the proposition that man is basically good and forgetting the guilt, making nonsense of original sin, then it can be seen as one violates one's own ethical standards. A justification of one's action starts to take place. One is inclined to diminish the status of the sinned against person to make one's own sin less severe. Justification is always a signpost of a sin committed. As proof of the above contention is the genuine coughing up of one's transgressions that always leads to a mending of a broken relationship. Differences of, of opinion or intentions between two people who have loved each other should always be amiable. I've enjoyed your shows. I think you could do stand-up comedy. I'm keeping it flat, Len Mooring. That's really? It. Yeah, I don't think I'm particularly you could do funny. Comedy. No, I'm not particularly funny. A lot of men you say, quote, chicks aren't funny. I mean, I think that's a crazy blanket no, statement. No, girls, girls don't play video games, but chicks are funny. They <laughs> can weird. be. Everyone's funny. We have that right moment, you know? Usually women are, I think, are funnier as the straight man in a team, or they can be the funny man in the team. I mean, look at, um, oh boy, some of the old comedy teams from way back when. Oh, uh, uh, Gracie and... Um, 
Burns? Oh, or, uh, George Burns. George I mean, that's Burns. a really old one. Yeah. Um, Ricky and Lucy. Yep. Um, Carol Burnett and Dick Van Dyke. According to people who translate. No, wait, it's not Carol Burnett. Uh, Carol Burnett and Harvey Keitel. Har Har Harvey Keitel, yeah. Dick Van um, Dyke, and the really pretty. Mary Tyler Moore. Mary Tyler Moore. Loved her. Yeah. 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 Laurel and Hardy. Some people think, you know, where they do transvestigations <laughs> and they think one of them is a woman or Burton whatever. Ernie. <laughs> transvestigation necessary on that one, too. Uh, they, Just joking. I'm not a fan of they that. They were roommates for a very long time, weren't they? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, let me see what else I've got here. Twin, twin beds. Um, we've got a guy named Josh Crane writing me. He says he's a final year TV radio student at the University of Salford, Manchester. And for his final film, he's creating an interactive flat earth documentary and was is wondering if I'd like to be a part of it via Skype interview. He's nice. got Gary John Heather and DITRH, Dave Marsh already on board. And, I didn't get that one. Who's uh, that from? It is from Josh Crane. Just came oh. yesterday. He says he's emailing a bunch of other people too. So oh. you're looking in your inbox. We, no, I didn't get it. Aren't we Miss Fancy Pants? <laughs> I'm not. I'm so very fancy in my garbage bag dress. How's that, how's that holding up, by the way? I'm I, quite I, hot, to be honest. I, well, yeah, because because it's I have it on over my skin, you know, uh, <laughs> and if you put plastic on your skin, it's very. Um, it's insulating, moist. is what it is. <laughs> Um, could, gotta, go ahead. What? But it could have been worse because had you done the whole traditional neck, cut out the neck thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then you would have been freaking baking. Yeah. I'm glad I have a little bit of airiness here. Mm. Uh, this email is from Bruce. He says, my name is Bruce from Dundee. Hi, Patricia. Dundee, Scotland. I've been a flat earther for a couple of years now and follow a number of shows and names. Yourself, Mark, Bob, Jaren, Nathan, D-I-T-R-H, O-D-D, to name a few. Last year, I composed an album inspired by the whole flat earth subject called Sounds of the Flat Earth on Bandcamp. So be looking for that. Bruce Gall on Bandcamp, Sounds of the Flat Earth. I didn't even know nice. that existed. So cool all the things people have, are, that are doing. Somebody named Sage Hill writes, saw behind the curve. My name's Sage Hill. <laughs> Started, uh, don't all of them start out like that now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've started a YouTube channel in which a new conspiracy series is in the making. I'd love to do a video call with you and talk about this, as I myself believe that there's amazing evidence that the Earth is flat. Et cetera, et cetera. Thank you heaps. And then he links his channel. So Sage Hill is his name. That's a nice name. Yeah. Um, here's one from Fernando Napier who says, I watch behind the curve. Hi, Patricia. I'm not a flat earther, but I love the flat earth movement is led in part by you and Mark. By the way, I don't lead anything except myself, but that's what he wrote. So I'm reading it. Right. He continues, the magnitude of positive vibes I see from you is heartwarming. I honestly subscribed and watch your videos because of the energy you send into the world. I wanted to say, if you're ever in Omaha, Nebraska, I'd love to have dinner and grab drinks with you. Take care, Fernando. Lovely offer. Thank you, Fernando. Thanks for the uh, message. If anybody wants to message me anything, um, please do. And all that you need to do is just do Miss Steer, M-I-S-S-S-T-E-E-R-E -S -S -E -E at gmail.com. At CIA.gov. <laughs> uh, so the headlines I was looking, I, those are wonderful emails, by the way. They are not. There's a whole bunch more, but I don't want to bore people. So. No, that's cool. The uh, the headlines I was looking through the, you know, because I just go, in this, case, in this case, I'm going through Bing, this show sponsored by Bing. And, uh, and Metatron. Don't and forget. Metatron. No, no, never forget Metatron. <laughs> never Honest forget. to God, that is going to be there till the freaking day I die, isn't Funny. it? And Did if you, you really look up the company, they trade for less than a penny on the stock. The, the one, you know, uh, part of one of the deleted scenes in the documentary was me rattling off all the things I've been accused of oh, up yes, until that I point that. in twenty seventeen. Uh, my favorite was you, that you're a large Jewish woman. <laughs> I'm a large Jewish woman, which made no sense. But the one that came out recently blew me away. And that was that before, as you know, I was, um, I was the, uh, I had, I was Joe Real, right? Right, right. But the, but one of the founders of Metatron, you know, this penny yeah, stock company out of San Diego. Whatever. But now the latest is is that I am actually the gay lover of Joe Real. Right. Which means, if you're if you're trying to figure out what that means, that means I am actually the gay lover of an of my own alter ego. <laughs> So now we are completely different people, Joe Real and I, and he and I have been having this torrid affair for only on a flat earth. Oh, oh my God. Anyway, <laughs> so 
Uh, ever since the document came out, the mainstream media has been freaking lighting it up. I mean, I even saw, and I don't want to, I won't poke at you too much, but I do love the, uh, the headline Morrissey fan on Netflix flat earth documentary. I thought that I'm was so happy that I got into a Morrissey fan website just yeah. because I was pictured with these albums. Exactly. It's like, I didn't know there was Morrissey fan website and sure enough, you there's many now. of them. And the funny thing about this fan site is if you read the, if you find this and read all the comments, there's a bunch of people who are flat earthers in there or are flat earth curious, right? which is pretty cool. Um, since then, I'm just going to pick out some of the highlights. Uh, Metro, for whatever reason, they love us. They love talking about us. So the first one was uh, the most eyebrow raising moments from Netflix, uh, flat earthers documentary behind the curve. And then literally, right right after that, if you like, also Metro, if you like Flat Earth Theories on Netflix, here's what you should watch. Because there's a lot of Flat Earth stuff on Netflix. No, there's only one thing. Uh, then they ran Behind the Curve Director on how to argue with Flat Earthers and be heard. You read that part of that one mm -hmm. with Daniel Clark. Uh, which, of course, he lets it slip a few more times that, you know, Flat Earth bugs him to no end. That's not how he act when he was, acted when he was with us filming, though. Well, again, I, and you and I disagree on this, which is I don't think, I think it was that moment. Because remember, we heard it again last night. I think he's which a was, snake. Well, no, I, okay. Again, I disagree. Sorry. Patricia thinks he was, uh, the, uh, you know, against us since day one. I don't think he was against us till the conference. I think he wasn't really against us in so much as he thought we were kooks from the beginning, realized he couldn't treat us. Oh, yeah, us, but harmless. Realized he had a fake pretend he respected us and right. would give us a uh, neutral look at Flat Earthers and our community. And then his when he went into the filming, the truth came out, and yeah. he doesn't really care after it's already been put in the can and is it's you know on netflix etc because you know it can't go back and be erased and he doesn't have to ever deal with us again so he can right. do and say anything he wants now the again i've heard the 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 younger the 12 year old kid that was at the conference now four four different occasions national geographic the documentary ephemeral rift channel and the interview we did last night which is why i asked him because he said it and i and i said so that part really and he goes yeah it bothered me it's like, yeah, because it's, again, it's all fun and games until, you know, it's, it's until too Until the real. children get Until hurt. the children. Yes, because, again, we market to the children. We have an entire um, child marketing campaign, much yeah, like right. Joe Camel and the cigarette companies. Yeah, exactly. The, the thing is, is that there are flat earthers who are teaching their children the flat earth, I wouldn't say model, but the flat earth concept, let's say. Or maybe they're, they do have a model they're teaching their children. But also, if they're in regular schools, they're being taught the heliocentric model. Right. And they're telling their children, you know, it's up to you to decide, or this is what we talk about at home, but you've got to learn this for school. Or please go, go ahead, little Billy or little Susie, and tell the teacher that you don't believe. You know, every parent has a different approach. That's a flat earth parent. Right. Um, some flat earth parents keep it entirely to themselves and don't tell their children. I mean, I'm not telling flat earth parents to do anything. They're the parents. I am not. I have no right to tell the parents to do anything or not do anything. So I'm speaking to the kids directly. And most of the time, I'm just asking for their parents' credit card numbers. Mm -hmm. And doing some kind of brainwashing by using um, uh, NLP, you know. Absolutely. I will, you know, well, actually, I won't say it just to give the trolls some ammunition, but absolutely. Subliminal messaging, it can Toys, happen. Toys, candy, video games. Right. You insert those words in, in between flat earth, talking flat earth. Free toys. <laughs> right. So flat earth, free toys, uh, eight inches per mile squared, candy. The uh, oh, absolutely. It's always flat sugar cereal. <laughs> sugar cereal. <laughs> There's been no me measurable motion of Earth. Oh, um, stay up all night. <laughs> there, there was one story that really caught my eye, though, and that was I don't know if you caught this, and this was from uh, it was initially actually it was a re this is a reprint. I don't know where the original was. It's called Sex, Drugs, and Flat Earth. Facebook's content watch contractors cope with the dregs of the internet. Now, did you did you remember the original story when this thing came out? So Facebook has a like a like a watchdog system where they scan through pages, right? And they look for you know questionable content. And through osmosis, 
some of this content gets through to them, especially the conspiracies. Because if you look at enough conspiracies and you, and and you, whether you ban them or you're not, you're getting, you know, like, um, like uh, you remember the old people, you, you remember this, where people would run their hands through coffee beans in coffee bean commercials. Mm. And by the time they were done, they'd be just freaking jacked up just because the, the coffee beans were soaking in through their hands. Oh, the skin is the largest organ and anything you put on your skin goes into your body. So that's why you shouldn't be putting chemicals on your skin, even mm -hmm. chemical deodorants or chemical lotions or shampoos. It's true. There are potential <laughs> side effects. Absolutely. <laughs> so the, anyway, so, the, so the, some of these guys in the Facebook watch group are now flat earthers. They're running around telling people because they've seen it so many times that they, they, they picked it up through osmosis. Some people don't, you know, some people are like, nope, I, they're, they're against it. They're never going to look into it. You know, they can't get past the denial stage, but I was, I was fascinated. And of course we should probably bring up how many people did the story. Well, again, it's it generated more stories. Flat earth Netflix documentary behind the curve. Did flat earthers prove the earth is round? A bunch of people jumped on that. And there was a new one just yesterday. Well, there was one actually this morning, which I'll tell you about in a second. Do you remember, and I haven't read the article yet, but I probably should. Do you remember the guy from the Philly Voice that they interviewed in the documentary? Where I said, we have people everywhere, and they go to him. He's like, nope, nope, yes. not me, nope. He actually wrote his own article on this because he's been catching so, you know, because, you know, he's in the freaking documentary. And after, after Netflix came out, just people kept asking him questions. And he says, yes, that's me in the Flat Earth documentary behind the curve on Netflix. Because people just kept shooting. It's like, dude, are you in a documentary? It's like, yeah, I'm in it. So I thought that was awesome. The people that are in the documentary, I've noticed, not the people that had speaking parts. It's not parts because we weren't acting. But there's other people. Some of them um, have said, um, why didn't they ask me permission to be in there? And they're saying, why didn't you, Patricia, ask permission to put my face in there or show my flat earth uh, Facebook group, they flashed on screen for a few moments. Why didn't Mark ask our permission? Well, the thing is, is that we had nothing to do with any of that. No. We weren't, we don't own the film. We didn't plan the film. We didn't see the film before it came out. We had no idea exactly what was going to be in it, except for we knew all the things we individually said. So whatever was shown in there was either taken from the public domain, meaning right off YouTube, or shot off the screen, on Facebook or something else, YouTube. Yeah. So um, if somebody has a flat earth group, oh, I hear an echo. You do? Yeah. Still? Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Okay. If somebody's got a Facebook group and it was shown on screen, I haven't seen the film in a bit and I can't remember that particular How about now? scene. Much better. Do you remember the particular scene where it showed Facebook groups? How many yeah. Facebook groups were? It was a pretty quick scene, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It was, very, it was a quick cut scene. Well, there was a couple of people angry that their group was shown. And I thought, wait a minute, that doesn't make your group seem bad that it was shown. No, if anything, it's like, look, here's your group. And it, but there were people angry and wishing that the, that us, that we would have reached out to them before having it in the film. Oh yeah, no, no, we it wasn't up to us anyway. But yeah. the thing is, is that it's, it's good that your group's name got out there because there are people who will be watching it and thinking, I need to find more about Flat Earth. Maybe I'll join that group I just saw flash on screen for a second. People might not know your group. Now they might. Maybe. I had so much fun sitting for the first time with you in Toronto, watching it just to get that montage, you know, the, the eventual montages of all the different people because we know everybody. And so like when Nicole Cote shows up for just a second. Yeah, and, I'm like, Nicole. That's like all Cote and then Dell. And uh -huh. you know, it's like all these other people. It's like boom, 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 boom. Most going, oh wow. You know, they're really covering a, a big gamut of people. And uh and it was fun. Uh, you know, and so don't uh, anyone that was in it and you know, don't don't take that to you know personally. Yeah, they weren't gonna tell you because again, that's fair use. They they don't have to tell you because you put your stuff up on on the cloud and they took a snippet of it. So but I, I don't think it made any of those people look bad at all because it was so short. I don't think it made anybody look bad at all anyway due to the fact that we are flat earthers. And if you're shown in a film at a conference that you've paid money to attend, you're pretty much flat earther. And you shouldn't, if you're ashamed, you shouldn't go to a conference. Right. Or have a YouTube channel that has flat earth in the title. 
Um, right. But then again, you know, I can't tell people how they should feel. The thing disappointed me, but it also excited me. And here's why. I got to see the community in action and all of our problems and issues and all of the good things about it. And that was lovely. It's a, a point in time that we're never going to be back there again. And we've got it on film to watch. Right. That's pretty cool. We've gone a long way since then. Oh, yeah. And we've come a long way with lots of the demonstrations. We're using infrared. There's so many things that are being done. Right. Um, it's just getting better and better. Right. And I that's, go, a, I, that's like watching an old, that'll be watch, like watching an old family movie. You know, I mean, in my family, we did. We'd watch, uh, anytime it was somebody's birthday, my sister or brother or I, my dad would bring out the projector and put the, you know, this is old, old style, you know, and pull the screen down, put the screen, white screen lights out, and then play these films, literal films. And right. they would be the, the home movies that my parents had taken when we were all babies. Right. And they're just wonderful to watch and you'd cry and you'd rest about the old days. And that film will be like that too. Yeah, there's tons of bad stuff in there, but I'm talking about the good stuff. And that's really what I want to focus on is the good stuff yeah. because it's up to us to what we want to focus on and what you focus on increases. And I'm here for the good. And think of what, so that was a snapshot of 2017. And what's great about it for me is we've come exponentially further since then. And so when people look it up now, you know, of course, you know, in 2019, they're looking it up on Netflix and all of a sudden they do a flatter search and it's even bigger than what the movie portrayed. You know, there's even more media outlets. There's even more channels. There's channels that you never even heard of from that weren't even there in 2017 that are out there now talking about it. Uh, it's, it's, it's always fun to see a forward progress. It'd be different if he was like, oh, well, Flat Earth is dead now. In 2017, it was a thing. 2019, it's dead. No, 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 no. 2019, it's ridiculous at this point to where even the government's trying to take action and the biggest corporations in the world for whatever reason, even though it's not a thing, which you know I worked into part of my speech for the year. Hmm. I'm just hoping in the future that there will be a time when we can work, all of us can work more closely, even if we don't all agree and we're never going to agree. Hmm. We've gone through these periods of time where people are coming up with accusation after accusation after accusation. And there's whole channels that are devoted to just accusations. Right. That's all they do. But um, those channels aside, I mean, they can have their fun, you know, using other people's names to make them popular and coming up with wild stories. It's kind of amusing in a way. But the rest of us, I don't know. I, I, we don't have to love each other, but we have to realize that we're here unpaid right. on our own time right. outside of our taking care of our children or working at our job or handling our pets or our home life to, to, to gather together and try to shake up the dominant paradigm and bring something to the world that the world used to know and we're being mocked so the mockery from within is extra painful mm -hmm. and i i just hope someday it'll stop i think it's up to each individual person to look within and say is it worth my time trying to tear others down isn't it more worth my time to build others up agreed yeah yeah i I don't know if I could add to that. <laughs> the, no, seriously, it's it happens in any group. We're very competitive as a species, and I know that everybody wants to do things their own way, and they want it to be a certain way. Uh, and you have quite a bit of pull on the internet. More, you know, you you generate content, you get subscribers, and you and you want to do things. And it's great, uh, but don't forget, you know, everybody's got feelings and, you know, attacking, there's nothing really positive uh, attacking from within other than, I will say this, if you want a silver lining, you know, because I try to look for them, is that it's rarely boring <laughs> in the flat earth community. I mean, how many times we sit around going, yeah, is there anything going on? Oh, yeah. when there's nothing going on, it's like, what's happening? What? Where is everybody? Right. I don't mean, I mean, nothing bad going on. There's always right. something good going on. Yeah. It's, it's, this the happens before the storm. It happens all the time. If, yeah. If you look back in, in history, idle armies that are just sitting there waiting for something, 
oh yeah it's only a matter of time before it's like yeah you know what we're bored let's fight those fighting words you know i wonder if somebody out there who's quite good with the moon and its phases can figure out if like a chart of when flat earth goes into that you know, implosion state oh it has anything to do with the moon you know the moon really luna lunatics really um i mean yeah, you realize oh. if you if you delve into astrology too much here that sorry you, my phone just made noise i didn't mean it to um no, that's right i was um i did do a, a show on astrology on a flat earth uh two shows back so everyone check that out but i there there's maybe there is a connection there's it's a possible connection. or with something else i don't know i'm just going to say the moon because that's kind of a common knowledge thing whether or not it's even true that the moon may have some uh connection with with emotions and feeling i could consult the gypsy woman i suppose <laughs> i mean she says i'm a double gemini with a bad moon rising mm. what, what is your astrological sign i know but i forgot i am a taurus oh i know you're a taurus all, all the way i, I am, know you're a taurus and, I, and I, people I, people that know I, they i'm i'm one of the e easiest people to guess ever you are a taurus my yeah. brother's a taurus as well yeah and I, I can't forget that your birthday is is coming up may right in may april 20 Oh, oh, okay. So, Taurus. So Taurus actually, I'm on a, from April into May. Yes. Get this. I'm on a plane, the entire duration of my birthday. Oh wow. So do you age then? Maybe not. Oh wow. <laughs> I should do some sort of incantation on the plane. Well, last year for your birthday, I sang "Happy Birthday" to you on this channel, and yeah. it's back there somewhere in the secret show playlist right. pretending to be Marilyn Monroe when she sang to John F Kennedy wearing a spangly dress right and it was like happy birthday you know the way she sang I mean it was a it was a poor woman's version of that so what will oh, I be doing for well, your birthday this year oh Absolutely god nothing uh, on, because we will be on planes <laughs> flying we'll be on planes uh honestly uh after you singing me happy birthday I can I could probably die a happy man now huh nice okay. nice it's true. It was good. I mean, you again. You throw me sometimes. You absolutely. I mean, between that and Maleficent, it's like wow. Boy, you people have taken my Halloween costume that I bought at a party store for like twenty bucks and put on with some white face makeup and red lips. And boy, they've taken that thing to the moon and back with that their was a costume. Yeah, that's what they're saying. It's <laughs> a devil worshiper. It's a costume from a Disney movie. Obviously, anybody could buy this thing. It's like, you know, people who really are, I've never met a Satan worshiper as far as I know, right. but people who really are, they don't walk around with horns on their head wearing a black pleather, you know, cape That's and right. go, ha, 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 you know, with claws out. They, they usually cloak just themselves like, with good no, deeds. <laughs> they cloak themselves with good deeds. They look like normal people. Uh, they might be somebody living next door to you. And or um, looking at you through a screen. Right, we've got a uh, channel in here right now who's making some trolley comments, calling you and I Satanist. That person could be the Satanist, probably but because they what you want. Is that what you want to do? You really want? No, to no, no, no. What I'm saying is, yeah, he's an accuser, accusing oh. others of being Satanists. That could be what a Satanist's tactic could be. The best defense is a good offense. So, I mean, I'm saying that channel without naming its name, hmm. Satanist. Well, Hashtag Satanist. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, um, <laughs> just joking with all that, but kind of not. We don't know what Satanists dress like. I don't know. It, we don't know. We don't know. But making an accusation based on a Halloween costume is kind of lame. Like this patch that I'm looking at right here could mm -hmm. be a Satanist patch. What is it? It was randomly, it was because, you know, my grandfather, who turned 100 years old last year before he passed away. He, and I met him once. Yes, you did meet and him. And he was quite, he was like 99 when I met him. 99 when you met him. And he had a girlfriend. The man and I met the girlfriend. Frickin', he was not what I, what, you know, I mean, he was not what I considered. It's like, look, he was a tall, skinny nerd. And he had girlfriends his whole life. Kind of like you, in a way. In a way. Right, I mean, I've met one of your girlfriends that's happened during Flat Earth, and I know of, and I met virtually another one of your girlfriends. Maybe you're hiding some others I don't know about. Uh, you, you, Mark. <laughs> no, no, okay, no, 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 no. Really, you're gonna do that? No, don't do that. No, but what I mean is, is that um, your grandfather lived a good life, and up until well, close to the end, he was 
in love or, you know, in a relationship but, with someone. That's cool. But, but let me show you this. He was in World War II, obviously, and he was, I think, in artillery, but I don't know this for sure. So let's look at this insignia and tell me what you see. Ooh. Is that a dragon? That is a dragon with an arrow coming out of his mouth. I know, right? I bet somebody would be able to figure somebody out Somebody can recognize it. this. This is a military patch. This is the United States Army from circa 1942 mm -hmm. through 1944. It's a dragon with an arrow. I have been looking, doing searches online. I can't find it. So if anyone can tell me what that patch is, I would like to know. I'm I think looking. it's our, I, I think it's artillery. Okay, so he's spitting out an arrow. Is that kind yeah. of what it is? Yes, but the point is, does that mean this artillery group is satanic because it is a dragon? And as you know, dragon has been a symbol for a lot of things. And people say there were no dinosaurs. They were indeed dragons. Brr, brr, it's kind of cute, I guess. Brr, I mean, and it's blue. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's all about. Interesting. And yeah. there's little um, effects of my grandparents that I have here in my house and pictures as well. And even of my parents who are both dead now. And I, I can't ask them, what, what is that? What is that? So I encourage anyone, while your parents are still alive or while one of them is still alive, go through the old family photo album right? and see, ask, well, who's this? What's this? And write on there, on the back, who it is. Exactly. Because otherwise you'll just be like, who's that my great grandmother standing next to? There's fascinating stories that all of us have to tell, but we wouldn't know. And, you know, I'm kind of lost. I'm the matriarch of my family at 56 years old now. Wow. That's my brother pointed that out to me the other day. I have a mm -hmm. brother who's four years younger and a sister two years younger. Hey, Guess, hey. guess what time it is, Patricia? Mm. Mm, time to close the show? Well, first time for a jinky poke, and then... You're going to drink out of the bottle? I've like, been drinking out of the bottle. You know what? I was reading chat, and I didn't notice. This is you and me, exactly. He's a Taurus. I'm an Aquarius. Those don't match in astrology. He's drinking out of the bottle. I'm drinking out of a glass. But yet, but yet... What? People think we're adorable, apparently. <laughs> I don't and here we are. We're a couple of somethings. Somethings. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, no, uh, I've got the um, I've got that interview with, uh, oh, what's her name? Samantha Scarlett. I don't think that's her real name. Samantha Scarlett. I looked her up the other day. You've got an interview coming up next, which is why we started our show an hour early. Right. And we're about ready to close now. Right. But I looked her up. She's a young, attractive girl who does conspiracy videos. Wow. Or conspiracy talk show. Yeah. She's quite young and um, kind of um, a badass, I guess you could call yeah, it. Yeah, you know, a lot of dark, you know, tattoos. Yeah, exactly. I'm a so, rebel. Yeah, kind of. Whatever. I've Whatever. always thought when people dress themselves in a rebellious fashion, they're just trying to look like everybody else who's rebellious, which makes them kind of not rebellious. Maybe yeah. being rebellious is just like blending in with everyone else. And we are the ultimate rebels, actually. Flat Earthers? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we don't have a particular look. We don't have a particular anything. Nope. Nope. Like, we can yeah. even wear trash bags, you know, like I am right now. <laughs> well, it's a little bit too much cleavage, sorry. Um, <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, the dress has fallen a bit. Let me fix first. <laughs> I seriously use tape that you tape packages up with and three trash bags. That's all that's holding this together. I tried staples on my first trial run dress, but they cut my skin. So as we close out our show, I'm going to let everybody see the dress one more time because we right. have people who've just come in now and, you right. know, I made this trash bag dress based on a joke in chat about wearing so, a, Patricia's, a trash bag. Tr tr Patricia's trash bag dress, you're going to have to keep talking so the camera goes down. I'm kind of walking away to use the dress. Yep. And here it is. I'm impressed. And I did add pearls in the belt. And the only bad thing about it is it's some, it's a trash bag, so it's kind of warm. I'm probably losing five pounds <laughs> right now. <laughs> anyway. Nice. I hope this was worth it. This show will probably go down in history as the trash bag show, which I'm all for, actually. Oh. We've taken the heliocentric model and yet once again thrown it in the trash, all of us together. Yeah. And until we meet again, uh, Thanks, everyone. Give the video a thumbs up. Like I said, it'll have a ton of thumbs down, and maybe by tomorrow, YouTube changes that algorithm. And uh, tomorrow, I'm on with Nathan Oakley. 
and we're doing the uncurved show and Anthony Riley is going to come on and we're going to be talking about something those two have cooking. So please join us for that. And that starts at 5 p.m. Eastern time on the 7th of March, 2019. And that concludes this episode of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, The Secret Show, episode 282. And as I always say, keep it classy, not trashy, <laughs> and wow. keep it flat. Right on. George Clooney, Hail Hydra, uh, go PowerCoin. <laughs>